Yep, we've all been there before. Making a mistake during a live stream, switching to a wrong camera, switching to a camera that's moving, or switching to, well, a blank screen. Yep, I've done it. Probably you have done it before, or at least it will happen. It's just fact of life. It's also you are human, so you make mistakes. Anyways, how can you fix that? You can fix that maybe in post, but you do need to have recordings that you can count on. Enter ISO recording. ISO recording is stands for isolated recording. That means that every camera input is actually recorded separately. And these models right here, um, those two with ISO in the name can actually record every single camera input, which means that they will be able to help you if something goes horribly wrong. Okay, so this video is all about how you can integrate a ISO workflow into your production. All right, so let's talk about ISO recording. First and foremost, you do need to have a SSD card to make this happen. This is the T5 by uh, Samsung, and it's a really nice uh, uh, hard drive. But of course, it all starts with formatting this one, and that's what we're gonna do right now. So here we are in Windows, but you can also do the same in Mac. I do prefer uh, XFAT formatting because that will allow a uh, hard drive to work on both Mac and Windows. And this is a 225 uh, gigs uh, uh, drive and give it a meaningful name, but don't forget to set it on 128 kilobytes because that is really important to have a good performing SSD card because you do need to have a big, uh, yeah, fast card to make this happen. So now that we have formatted this drive, we also need to make sure that uh, we can actually use it. And in order to do that, we actually need to uh, hook it up to the ATEM Mini. And in all fairness, I have recorded a little bit upfront because as you will see, my desk is 100% full and I want to focus today on, of course, talking to you. So let's go to past me. All right, a bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes. So this is basically the way that I've uh, done this. I have my HP Omen uh, laptop. I have this uh, T5 by Samsung SSD card, which is, uh, of course, via USB-C. Come on, focus, focus. All right. Anyway, then I have one camera right here, one camera right there, and that one right there. And then, of course, the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, which we will connect this uh, cable into right now. So let's do that together. Hopefully this is going to work with one hand. I... There you go. Like so. And immediately you see that this uh, uh, light right there is lighting up. So that means that the disk is ready. So let's go into the software to see if that is indeed the case. All right, so now we're in the uh, the ATEM software. Click on record stream, and this is where you can provide a, a meaningful name. Uh, in this case, I'll just put in demo. Uh, and you see the drive is already connected there. Uh, you can also uh, click on uh, display uh, status record all cameras and ISO a recording. If you click on record all cameras, it will record it in a Blackmagic camera, but unfortunately I do not have that. So that is the reason why I cannot use that. And this is what how it looks like it is now connected. And let's uh, check it out how it looks like if you are in um, this uh, stream mode. So I'm just selecting all kinds of different buttons. This is the super source that I'm using that I have been creating. And yes, you can download it for free and going back. And this is roughly what it looks like and boom. So now you've seen how you, well, I have recorded the setup, um, but of course I want to show you how it looks on the ISO recording. In order to get that into your system, uh, you do need to uh, first um, transfer the SSD drive 
onto your uh, PC. Now you can do that, of course, by uh, disconnecting the drive and putting it into your uh, PC, but there is a even more cool way of doing that, and that is via FTP. That's right, it does have an FTP server. Just uh, fill in the host name of your Ather Mini, click on it, and then you'll find the ISO recording directory right there in the roots. If you click on that, uh, you will see demo. That is the one that we just provided. And now I am actually uh, transferring it to my PC that I'm running for DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve, I hear you say. DaVinci Resolve is a editing software package that is for free, well, there's a studio version that you have to pay 255 euros for, and there is a free version. But for this, the free version will do quite nicely. Um, but you do need it. Well, you don't need it really, but it is making it way easier on yourself to make a, uh, let's say, a post-editing uh, uh, workflow. That's the reason why I actually downloaded it. So let's go ahead and download it from the website from Blackmagic. Uh, go to Products then go to the uh, DaVinci Resolve tab, navigate down, and here you'll see that we have two versions, the 255 version, the Studio, and the Resolve, the new, the, the free one. That's enough for, for what we want to do. Then let's go ahead and go down, and here you go, download now. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Clicking it now, oops. And as you can see, you can download Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, and I am on the Windows system, hence I'm uh, connecting to that one and then of course uh, fill in your form and hit uh, download and basically then you have the whole system uh, on there but I had a problem with the CUDA now so I need to download that as well so I'm going here to the NVIDIA developer site I'm selecting what kind of OS that I have uh, Windows Windows 10 and I am uh, performing a network download so once I have downloaded that, um, I, I am opening it up. It's, it's now a little bit faster than in real life, <laughs> but I am actually showing you exactly what I did to install CUDA. And again, it was an error that I had when I first opened NVIDIA. So that's the reason why I'm showing you this. And I think it's really important to show you what is the best way of doing this. And that is using custom, not recommended. Then just deselect everything that you see in this uh, pane. So everything needs to be uh, uh, not selected apart from the CUDA runtime. So you'll see that I am just continuing to uh, remove all of these uh, nice products, I have to admit, but we should just simply do not need it apart from the runtime, as you can see right here. Um, and once you've done that, you just hit uh, next, and then the installation process will go on without any problems. And that once that is done, boom, you're done. However, I also had a problem that my driver was not updated, my NVIDIA driver. So now I'm going to the device manager. I am selecting display um, adapters, my NVIDIA card right here. This is on my laptop, by the way. And then I'm just hit hitting update driver, and I'm just, asking the computer to download it so that uh, you will get the perfect driver for your computer. And that's basically all that that is all about. That means that once you have done the, that, you have successfully created your ISO recording, you've successfully created, well, formatted it, you've created a, a nice uh, DaVinci installation. That means that you're basically ready to uh, go into DaVinci Resolve and then do some editing. Now, for this, uh, for this video, this, this is not the intention of this video to show you exactly how to edit, but I did do a quick edit just to show you how it goes. The cool part is that remember that I moved everything to uh, my directory by, via the FTP server, right? Well, on the FTP directory, there's also a demo.dxp. And if you click on that, it will automatically open DaVinci Resolve. And I'm speeding things up a little bit here. It does take some time to load DaVinci Resolve. But once you're here, it will automatically also 
update it to the project file. And here you go, boom. Here you, you, here you have all of the cuts that I've done uh, just a few, few uh, minutes ago. And you see that I can actually scroll through it and also uh, just uh, play it a little bit, uh, like for example here. So yeah, you can actually see that here. Now next to that, you will also be able to uh, change your cut point if you don't like it. So that is really cool that that's possible. And that's not all of it. You can actually also uh, open it up into a sync bin. So now you can see all of your camera inputs, including the black ones. So yes, all of them are recording. And if there's no camera attached, it will be recording it as a black one. Now my laptop is struggling a little bit to uh, play this in this mode. So uh, th this is really my laptop struggling. However, it is possible if you like, and you can also see when the cut points are there. So it goes from the camera one to camera two, uh, and that's basically what it does. Now let's go back to that uh, previous uh, uh, um, tab. And now I need to talk about something that was a little bit of a disappointment. Remember that I actually showed you the super source uh, during my edit. Now, if you pay attention, you see that there is a purple black part right here. And this is where the super source used to be. Now I could still go ahead and uh, put this one in, but I do need to go to back to this uh, draw, uh, file uh, system and go to the program out that was also recorded to make that happen. So yes, it's still possible to get it. However, you do need to go to the end result to uh, enable the super source. It's unfortunately not the case that the super source is seen as a separate product. It's a bit of a bummer, but I think it's uh, something that uh, can happen. So now you've seen the whole uh, workflow there for you. We have formatted the drive. We've used it. We have uh, successfully uh, transferred it via FTP. And last but not least, we have opened it into DaVinci Resolve and we did some minor edits. I will be having a separate video how to do it perfectly. I will promise you that, but I wanted to keep this one as short as we could. So that's that. If you like this kind of content, please go ahead and subscribe to this uh, channel. Please do that. We're almost at 500 at the moment of uh, creating this video. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified for future content. And I really, really appreciate you. If you would add comments below this video about what questions that you have so that I can actually use that in the live streams that we have every Saturday so that I can help you to become even more awesome than you already are. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.